Start us off, Chuck. We're going to go with the AFC South. We're going to go with the Titans. They are at six and a half wins. All these are from BetMGM, by the way. So, yeah, check that out for your betting needs, I guess. <laughs> but also, <laughs> we'll start with the Titans at six and a half. Uh, before you make your pick, kind of break down maybe why you think they could go over uh, to start and what you like about the Titans, Chuck. Um, I think they could go over. I mean, a lot of it depends on Will Levis, right? But the framework of this team, in a way, kind of reminds me of uh, like where the Vikings were a couple of years ago when they had that insanely fraudulent run to the postseason <laughs> and yeah. got knocked out by the Giants in the wild card, who went on who to get ha- absolutely- who also had an insanely fraudulent run to the postseason. <laughs> yes, and yeah, yeah. were promptly dismantled by the Eagles. I, I, I remember I covered that game, that, that playoff game, Giants Eagles, and I, by second half, I, by second uh, quarter, I was like, you know, get me out of here. This is. This is awful. But back to the Titans, I, I do think when you look at this team, you've got stars, right? DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Jeffrey Simmons. Then they have guys that they're developing on the offensive line with JT Latham and Peter Skaronsky. It, it If all of this works out, and I think especially if you get like the hits on the offensive line, that's not a bad core where you're going into games feel like, oh man, we don't have a chance today. You got some real good NFL players I, I think the depth falls off pretty quickly, like really, really, really quickly. So yeah, like, it does. <laughs> so Will, Will Levis is going to have to to really put on his big boy pants this year, but like they have enough uh, top end talent where they could be feisty each week, like seven and 10. That kind of sounds right to me. Yeah, that uh, I, yeah, that, that really does. They, I keep coming back to this team that I like them more and more. And uh, I think the personnel improvement you already hit on, but yeah, Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyler Boyd, like, uh, that works that works for any room works for any type of offense uh the offensive line is really where i think we're gonna see so much improvement with jc latham who who watching this preseason looks great in the run game some speed guys are gonna give him issues in the passing game but man it's just he's a weapon in the run game that's why they drafted him him and peter skaronsky are gonna be awesome on the left side the way cushionberry looked great in the preseason at center he looks every worth all the money they spent on him defense simmons mccreary sneed they they've got so many new faces that I like it a lot, but I also it's scary when you have a bunch of new faces because that can just, you know, takes a while to gel, especially on a defensive unit. You want to say, oh, yeah, just drop these guys in. They pick it up like an NBA team in a couple of weeks, but it's like it takes time. Um, But no, I'm with you. I just think that they have so many good, talented players. Levis has more flashes than maybe I'd even thought before I studied him. And they have just interesting things. And I think they're going to just have so much improvement with Bill Callahan. I think the offense is going to be more cohesive. I just, there's just all these like little small things that add up for me. So like, they're kind of like a sneaky, solid team, like a good, bad team is kind of how I'm feeling about them right now. But uh, yeah, but, but having said all that, what are some of your negatives with them? Maybe why they could go under weaknesses, maybe some things you don't like. We're going to kind of do this for every team. This is my excuse, by the way, before we get into 15 more teams. <laughs> to do a preview on every freaking team. So make sure I don't miss anybody. So this is a way to do it right here, but we're going to capture it, package it into an over under win total pick selections. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like this. This is a good idea. We're, we're going to be held accountable for the entire season, all 32 it's, teams. I want to check every flag I planted. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it is. And then when people say, well, I didn't see you say that, you can say, well, listen to our, our lovely podcast. Say. Uh, and they definitely do. They say they check out when you say Desmond Ritter has a small chance to be the 18th best quarterback in this season. That that you know they it's, definitely listen to that. Refer take. to that. Way it's too spicy. Hot to take. Uh, <laughs> but where where the Titans? It, it's tough because where where I looked at it earlier, they kind of fixed this big spot that I had concerns over. I uh, getting traded for uh, doing the trade for Ernest Jones from the Rams because I I, I want to talk about him later, but. We're we're also like highlighting some some uh, younger players, and I just remembered that I put down Cedric Gray for the Titans because at the time Kenneth Murray was in front of him, and I was like, "Hey, that's doable. Yes, that's possible." And, and Gray's a little favorite of ours. He's a little, it was a little pet favorite of mine in the draft. So no, that, all yeah, juice I, team that's a good call. Was he? Yep. I, and I really do think it's the depth here. Like, if you're going to look at, especially a defensive line. You got Jeffrey Simmons, who is probably one of like the five best defensive tackles in the league, mm-hmm. maybe even higher, depending on, on mm-hmm. how you're ranking them. Slowly uh, getting then, underrated, by the way. I, I would agree. Slowly, because New Game, uh, there's a, so many good defensive tackles right now, but he's like slowly kind of getting, you know, just drop down list where I, I feel like he's more of that. I think he's easy top five for me, even top four, maybe. Well, the Titans stopped playing the playoffs, so 
Yeah, that, yeah you have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Nash Vegas. You're not the <laughs> national draw. <laughs> but you look at Jeffrey Simmons, then beyond him, it's eh. Sebastian Joseph Day, like that ship sailed a few years ago. Tavondre Sweat has had a really, really rough offseason in terms of just getting ready for the NFL. So I'm not really sure how much you can expect out of him. The edge rusher situation is like, man, I, I, I keep waiting for them to like give Harold Landry like a real number one edge rusher to play with because I feel like he's ideally a really strong number two, mm-hmm. but he's going to be playing across from Arden Key this year. Like, I, I, I do think while like seven and 10 is possible, you still might need some heroics and really heavy lifting to get there uh, from, from your big players. So like we're talking about a team where the margin for error is razor thin. Cause like if Jeffrey Simmons misses time, your, your defense is cooked, dude. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. It feels weird to kind of be back with this, with the Titans, where I was like, I was starting to kind of rely on their defense and also them always being hurt as well, but also just like kind of being good and frisky, but yeah, that's not a lot of depth on defense. I, I just had defensive holes is why I put it. And just like, and whenever you have a bunch of new faces, it's just hard to gel. Like I referred to earlier, it's just hard. It's just, especially with a new defensive coordinator. So it's just, everybody's learning at the same time. I think they're going to have good games and it's just going to be, it's going to be volatile. Um, right. Even if I like a lot of the players, but the other thing too, and this is just more of my, my offensive brain always just comes back to what you can't do. Like I'm always like, all right, they don't have this. And that's running back size. And that, concerns me a little because they I was are just built about to, be, to bring up Pollard and Spears. <laughs> yeah, they're built to be bully ball. And then they got a guy that doesn't run between the tackles and Spears will run between the tackles, but he's small. So it's just a uh, it's just a weird combo, I, I think, to have with the, uh, with those two in there. Uh, but that that just has me concerned over the long term of the season because they're going to be a run and play action type of team. But and also just what if Levis doesn't improve? What if it's just he is boom bust and takes a bunch of sacks and it just doesn't doesn't come along. I think he he's better than that. He's shown some nice things in the preseason and when he played last season. And I think the coaches like him. So, you know, just have to be realistic about it. Uh, next thing, player or thing, a noun, you're most excited to watch or something you're keeping track of. I'll be a little smoother asking this with other teams, but just something you're kind of keeping an eye on for yourself or just want to kind of like share with other people. Latham and Skaronsky, I think yeah, that's yeah. the key for their offense. If those guys click and Skaronsky plays well and Latham can kind of, you know, he, he, I think Latham's had a good preseason, but like you can see times where like his weight can be just a smidge of a problem for him. Big. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, like when he gets his hands on you, it's over. So if, if yeah. Skaronsky can take that next step from last year, you got Latham already playing well at left tackle. Like he switched from right tackle to left tackle and is ahead of the curve from other guys who have done that recently and still ended up with good careers. So I think you should feel good about that. Uh, if those two guys click, I think that this offense and the ground game can kind of take off. Yep. But uh, really, that's it for me is offensive line improvements and, and just really the offensive, the whole offensive thing that they got going on. Like, that's really what it is because it's just, it's weird in a good way. It's just this, you got a cool offensive line coach with some improvement there. You got pedigree there. And then you got also receivers. You got Levis and his thing. So, yeah, just everything there is what I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, also, we're, for each team, we're going to do a rookie or a second year guy. It's kind of hard with rookies sometimes that if we haven't mentioned before, or maybe we just want to double down that you're watching this year. So we can maybe mention a couple if you want to nerd out. But uh, Chuck, who for the Titans, first year or second year guy you're watching I, I, is the, the big 306 pound left tackle. Right. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually still going to put Cedric Gray here. Nice. I, I, I like mean, because if the Titans, like if you're, if you're going to run two off-ball linebackers, you got Ernest Jones. That's a big, big upgrade from what you had. Um, even if he's just like, I don't know, like a B, B-level linebacker, that's still a humongous upgrade. Uh, so you're still looking at like probably him starting with Kenneth Murray to start things off because they just signed him this year. If you, I mean, I don't want to be mean, but like Cedric Gray, like if he is kind of on his game, that's so, he should be able to push Kent for for playing time this year. Uh, uh, so yeah. I, I would keep an eye on that, and also just to Andre Sweat. Like I, I was kind of baffled with the three hundred sixty pound nose tackle at the top of the second round. He had a rough off season. I just don't really see where the value is there. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong because those guys are kind of novelties when it works out. It, it just seemed like they're moving on from like the high risk guys that they have kind of prioritized. Sometimes it turns into Jeffrey Simmons and sometimes it, it turns into the few other guys that they've cut recently. Uh, I, I like the, uh, I like the shout out right there. Um, I, I think the, the linebacker situation, Ernest Jones could be interesting in this defense because just because of the defense coordinator and everything, because uh 
because of what Denard Wilson can do. And I think Ernest Jones kind of fits that. So I like that too. Uh, yeah, Latham was mine. And then Josh Wiley, tight end, second year tight end from Cincinnati. Big, long, gangly guy. Had some nice moments. I think he could be a cool little tight end for them. And especially with their offense going to do, I think they'll use tight ends a decent amount with the three receivers. So look out for him with, with, with Chig in, in that tight end room. All right, your pick over and on, or under six and a half wins for the Titans. I think I'm going to go just under at six. Okay. Now that I think about it. It's just second year quarterback raised within margins. I, yeah. it, it, it just seems like, it, 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 like I, I do think there'll be a tough out, but yeah. actually getting wins, I don't know. I, I, I'm right there with you. I think I'm going to go over, but I'm going to say it's just more like a smidge over. It's a seven and 10 over, not like an eight or nine or playoff team. I just, I think they're just going to be feisty every week. And yeah, and I think they'll be pretty well coached. And I'm, I'm excited to actually watch the Titans more than I thought maybe a couple months ago. All right, moving on. AFC South. Indianapolis Colts are next projected because actually they're tied with the other team, but at eight and a half wins. All right. With the Colts, what do you like about them? How could they hit the over? What are their strengths of their team, Chuck? <laughs> I mean, if Anthony Richardson <laughs> takes the next step, like there it is right there. I, I still think they have some 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 problems on defense, probably in the secondary. That that might be an area of struggle for them. But you got Steichen with the quarterback that he wanted. Uh, they almost made the playoffs for Gardner Minshew last year, like going yeah. from the fourth pick to being literally a game away from making the playoffs. Uh, is is pretty damn impressive. So, like, the base for a good team is already there. And they were kind of unusual from uh, normal teams with a pick that high because you still have guys like Quinn Nelson, Jonathan Taylor, DeForest Buckner. Like, there's still some guys on this team. Uh, but the, the key here is obviously Anthony Richardson. If he just turns into be, like, the overwhelming physical force uh, that he's projected to be and the passing takes another step, I mean, that that's going to be a pretty exciting offense. That That's it. I... I... Uh, we did the top 10 offenses, and I, I legit think that they could sniff that this year. Uh, because just Richardson, the play caller, the offensive line has it's solid across the board and has a little bit of depth, and so that's what I like. And also, the play calling just because they use so many RPOs, use so much play action, use the run game as well, tempo sometimes they can kind of lift the floor up of whoever's playing there. So I, I, I just, that's what, even if they have injuries, they can find ways. That's what I like about it, um, which is what you got to matter for 17 game season in the playoffs. I, even with the downs, downs injury uh, at receiver, it's that I like this beefy 11 personnel they got going. They got AD Mitchell. They got Alec Pierce. They got uh, Michael Pittman. All of them are above 200 pounds. Two of them above almost like 220. And then they got Anthony Richardson at 250 plus. Jonathan Taylor at 225. They got tight ends, Mo Alley Cox. He's like 270. So it's really, it's not just a me going like, oh yeah, beef size. It's a little bit of that. But it matters for how they run their offense because like they, what's cool about Steigen is just that he'll run the same run have all their receivers just block and then you'll run the same run and then they'll run uh, a bubble RPO. Then they'll run the same run and then they'll tag two slants on the RPO. So he'll just package different things out with the same runs. What's cool with this like kind of big size receivers is that they can block the head up stuff. But when they run like a bubble and you saw in the preseason game where they run the bubble uh, against the Bengals uh, to AD Mitchell and there's out there, there's Pierce, and Kyle Granson blocking for him, and he gets 12 yards on just a bubble because they're just road grading the quarter. Like this, these plus size receivers and these tight ends, it's kind of, yeah, they're, they're interchangeable. They can work in the slot, they can work outside. So, yeah, with, with Angie, the Richardson combined with that and all the, everyone saw him throw on sidearm, and I thought that actually was workable sidearm throws. Like he was, he's working on stuff and changing arm slots, and it's actually pretty cool to see. Uh, yeah, that's why you got to be excited about this this team because that's 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 what's going to lead this team. And I'll get maybe to the negatives about some of the defensive stuff. Uh, but you know, the defense I think will be fine stopping the run, maybe not stopping the pass. But I, I'm pretty pretty optimistic about the Colts this year. Flip side, why could they go under? Why should be we be worried about the Colts? What could be the downside of this team? You might end up in a spot where you're relying too much on a rookie edge rusher. Uh, that's trying to cover Latu, for, yeah, yeah with uh, Lights a lot too. Trying to cover for a secondary that you know everyone has said they kind of really needed to improve this off season and they, they didn't really. Um, they, like Ken, they just said okay. They said okay, <laughs> like we're gonna roll it back again. I'm, I'm, I guess. Gus Bradley have been doing the same thing since twenty like two thousand nine, mm-hmm. and it's fine. Uh, 
So I, I, I really do worry that they could find themselves in shootouts. And I'm not sure that's where you want to be with Anthony Richardson having so little NFL experience so far. But then again, like even in the limited action, we still got the Rams game last year where he's making big boy plays all over the field to, to keep them in the game. So it, it's, it's doable, but man, it, it just seems like kind of like the Titans a little bit to me, lesser so, because uh, I think they're more complete on offense. Uh, where you're like, man, you got some dudes on defense, but it could get ugly in a hurry. Like if your front's not winning, uh, and I, I think it's fair to be concerned about that. I don't think that like, Grover Stewart's not quite the player that he used to be. Uh, Quiddy Pay is just like the biggest NPC edge rusher in the NFL. Like that break will happen one day. <laughs> when, when he got his his option picked up, I was like, I have no opinion on this whatsoever which is probably not a good he's the, thing he's the dj humphreys of edges yes yes <laughs> because i i had a bunch of people asking me like people who watch football is quitty pay good i was like i don't know i don't know is he it, it it's it just seems like it might be a little bit too much for this defensive line to overtake these games and find the cover for the secondary that they need uh kenny moore is still a good player outside of that they they just need some of these guys to develop like they're just so so young in the secondary and they just i guess they just want to get better with reps that's that's really it. It's just the defensive back end is are they going to get shootouts or is this, this just how they're rolling? Gus Bradley's kind of run the same defense as always. He has some tweaks, but it's kind of the same stuff. That usually requires some dudes on the outside because you're sing, you know they have to play singled up so much. I didn't. I like Juju Brents a little bit, but it's not. He's kind of incomplete. Like it was just like flashes. So who knows? And yeah, they kind of just decided they're going to run him back, and I guess hopefully improve on just bet on traits. Uh, if Anthony Richardson flatlines, of course, that's going to be a negative and also just kind of like, oh, shoot, what do we do now? Uh, I don't think it'll happen, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I really do think that just even some of the stuff they use, like like hit, even though all the RPO stuff, he throws it so quickly and gets the ball on the guy so quickly that they can just like start running. Like just little things. That's that's what's really nice about having an all world arm, like a generational arm strength and actually better accuracy than people think. Um, but yeah, if he gets flat lines or gets hurt again, they have to go to Flacco. Yeah, that's going to stink. Uh, if they don't get anything out a lot too, if that he's just beating up on backup offensive linemen in the preseason. And he's, I, I do like, I didn't like him for everybody, but I liked him for the Colts because they have so much big guys with size that maybe aren't the best pass rushers. They're just pocket pushers. And now they got a guy that can do some stuff. So it worked for them really well, but yeah, that's that's really it. Like, uh, it's I, I really do think this offense got some high end stuff in, in store for them this year. Just wait until they get some game designs in there. But just whatever this defense is, it's a big question mark for me. All right. So, what is something or a player or something that you are keeping track of this year? Are you excited to watch? Uh, Juju Brents is one of them. I, yeah. Because he's a guy that had some hype coming out. Like, I think physically looks like you're ideal cornerback that you want a gus bradley corner yeah right a gus bradley <laughs> corner i was yeah. i was thinking because I, I, I felt like we just fell so hard to that meme like in the in the like the mid 2010s oh we need the six three corner so i was trying to yeah. avoid that but yeah he looks like 32 inch arms yeah 32 inch arms you know yeah. big dude and the th the funny thing is like you know th this raw this secondary is so young but juju brents is like the highest drafted player of the unit he was drafted in the second round. Everyone else is third round or below. There's looks like they're starting Jalen Jones at nickel, who was drafted in the seventh round last year. Uh, so they're going to need Juju Brents to live up to that second round price tag uh, immediately. I don't know if he can do it, but I will be watching to see, uh, see and find out. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. That's I think everybody is because like, that's how I am with him. I'm like, are you something? Like, are you alive? Like, are you something? But yeah, no, great call there. Uh, but I, for me, it's just the entire offense, which is going to be, that's kind of how I am anyways. But it's, I think this run game is going to be cool. I, I think just the play action stuff is going to be cool. I, I just want to see Richardson's growth. I, I want to see what Steichen, the run game stuff he's going to implement, because I don't think he's going to back away from using it, um, even after Richardson's injury. So just the entire offense in general. All right, rookie or second year player that you are watching this year? Uh, Light to a lot to an 80 Mitchell chalk picks yeah. first and second round picks, but especially with the Josh Downs injury, uh, 80 Mitchell's is going to matter. And on the flip side on defense, uh, they, they kind of need a lot to, to be not, not an ace, but to show some real, real deal flashes yeah. this year. They do. Yeah. Can you get, can you be an eight, 10 sack guy every year? That's what I always show like life of it. 
maybe not the Vic Beasley rookie year. Where you're like, eh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, I like lots too much better. But uh, I had J- J- Juju Brands actually as mine, and then yeah, Ad Mitchell, just because I'm. They're they're really using them. They're they they have to right now. But I'm I'm excited. I think this offensive system is going to be good for him and just how they use these guys. And I, I'm telling you, like watch the Colts and watch how big they are. Their receivers are just so big and they have some juice. Ad Mitchell's one of them. I, I think it's going to be a really cool uh, season from him. Yeah. Uh, last thing I have on Colts young guys. Uh, talk about the secondary real quick. The th- like four of their guys have been drafted. Four of their starters have been drafted since 2020. So the only person who's not on a rookie deal there is Kenny Moore. Uh, as far as the starter goes, Juju Brents uh, was drafted last year. Jalen Jones was drafted last year. Nick Cross was drafted the year before that. These guys have not played a lot of football together. So we will see what happens there. <laughs> and, all the ba- and all the backups, Rodney Thompson, Thomas, who I actually kind of like, but seventh rounder, Jalen Simpson, fifth rounder, Mike Abraham, sixth rounder, sixth rounder. <laughs> it's not like there's a lot of pedigree here. Uh, you know, and usually corner is one of those positions that's like, all right, oh, all pro team, first rounder, pro bowler first rounder pro bowler first rounder like it's not a lot of richard sherman's walking through that door all right your pick for the colts that they're at eight and a half wins over or under chuck uh i'm gonna go over i think that this team can make the playoffs they almost did last year i think anthony richardson to be a good deal better than gardner Minshew. and i know that some people were complaining about his performance against the Bengals. personally i thought it was fine uh like he maybe you you're you're piss off Heston throws like towards the end of his his time in the game but dude he started off red hot like I thought he, he looked good decisive accurate arm strength was cooking it, I, I think he might he might have just enough where they can go like 10 and 7 again and, and make the playoffs I think the offense is gonna be pretty good yep I, I'm right there with you uh, over eight and a half wins I'm, I'm excited about the Colts this year we'll see how the defense is but the offense I think is gonna be really really fun Richardson I I dark dark horse MVP pick I might be a year early on that but it's just, even he can handle the RPO stuff, which is not something I thought you can really, I, I was curious if they could like live off that, but he can. I, I think his accuracy is plenty fine for it. And just getting the ball quick, I think he makes really good decisions. He mitigates sacks. I think this run game's going to be good. This was a borderline top 10 run game easy, even without Jonathan Taylor last year for most of the year. So yeah, I, I just think they're, they got a lot cooking. All right, moving on or moving up, I should say, we got the... Also, eight and a half wins is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Chuck, Jaguars, why could they go over eight and a half wins? <sighs> I, it's like I, I keep flipping between like Trevor Lawrence and the defense, but I think for now, I'll say the defense only because I feel like they're better set up for success than the offense is. Um, I think this defense, I mean, they, they were pretty good last year. So, I don't really see why if you're like upgrading a defensive coordinator or Ryan Nielsen, why that couldn't be the case where you have uh, a pretty good year on defense. I just think the big thing is going to be health in the secondary. Like they need Tyson Campbell to come out and actually play some of these games now that, especially now that they paid him. Uh, But you're looking at a defense that has Josh Allen as a strong number one, Trayvon Walker as, as a quality number two. You've got Tyson Campbell at corner. The safety room, I think, is pretty underrated with Andre Cisco, Antoine Johnson, uh, and uh, man, who did they sign from the uh, the Packers? That's Darnell oh, Savage. Uh, my, my, Darnell Savage, yeah, Darnell Savage, right? Yeah, if you can, if you can move Darnell Savage, I'm the to only a role, person in America excited about that. By the way, it's like, seriously, you, uh, it's, <laughs> you, you can only ask him to do one thing, but like that one role is pretty good. I actually think that Cisco and Antonio Johnson are kind of the perfect safeties for him to play with because they can do some things that he just can't. But the defense, I'm pretty excited to watch him soon. I think that's going to be the, the week-to-week strength of this team, even if the offense will have some moments. Oh, God, I actually am coming around that offense after watching the preseason just because Brian Thomas looks so much further along than I was anticipating and 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 pretty dang good. Uh, Trevor also looks freaking incredible right now. <laughs> I know it's backups. I know it's preseason all that. Um, I'll get to the negatives in a sec before I, get, I throw some more cold water on all this. But this defense could be really, really cool. Like, I, I really think Andre Sisko is going to have a big year. I think the front and the personnel up front ma- like match Nielsen and what he prefers from his personnel perfectly, including Walker. Uh, even guys like, God, I, I, I want to say his full name properly now, Josh Hines Allen, because <laughs> I always wanted to oh, say Josh right. Allen. I forgot about that. Yeah, jo- Josh Hines Allen. But uh, all, all these guys, it, it's just that 
those guys may not make sense for other places that want many bend, bend your guys, you're not pocket pusher types, but this defense that does so many simulated pressures, does so many twists and just movement after the snap, these guys are great for it because they can kind of just do all that and do stuff in the middle where they can slant inside and push guards and centers that are a little shorter armed and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited about this defense. And yeah, I think the offense, I, I've been harsh on it because it's just fragile. And then maybe I'll, I'll just get my negatives out in the way. It's a very fragile, very fragile offense that if one injury could really just do a lot of bad things, I think they're a little more incubated than they were maybe in prior years. Hopefully they are because this is, you know, you're supposed to be building better rosters around your guys um, where, okay, maybe this guy can play inside and out at receiver like a Gabe Davis or if if um, Christian Kirk gets hurt or something like that. The offensive front doesn't have a ton of depth and that and also even if when they are healthy they're not great they're more average-ish overall even if harrison at right tackle is great and a really good player that's just what has me concerned anytime the offensive line questions are one of your main things that kind of limits how high i'm going to get about you because i just i've seen that story too many times no matter how much else there is but having said all that this defense i think is going to be reliable the run game will be a little bit boom busty but it's just that this offense could have some rough weeks, some low variance weeks while also having some high highs just based on injuries and also the offensive play calling. But uh, what, that kind of spilled out my whole thing, but why maybe <laughs> for you, could they go under maybe some negatives with them? Uh, we, I, I think we put this perfectly a couple of weeks ago when we said the Jaguars are an offense that is going to shoot long twos. Like you're going to dribble into the paint. You're going to have a double team yeah. and you're going to do the fadeaway over two people that are bigger than you. Now, so Joe. It's the I saw Joe offense. That's right. It. <laughs> uh, but it, it's it might look ugly at times, but the hope here is that Brian Thompson can get you enough open threes that maybe maybe it's it's not quite as constipated as it might appear uh, right now. And quite honestly, like it, it's been a public story at this point. Like they have to figure out what they're going to do with Doug Peterson and Press Taylor. Um, Doug doesn't seem to be interested in calling plays at all, but he probably should. Probably should, unless he just doesn't care about getting fired, which. It would be the practical way to view working. Yeah, I, I, it's still weird to me. It's like he's like, yeah, I don't know. Especially because day one he called plays, and then he's like, no, yeah. I don't want it anymore. And actually, maybe I might want it. They, I will say, they in the preseason, you only can take a little little kernels here. They had little things they were doing that was like, okay, did you learn your lessons? Meaning Luke Farrell was out there a lot. <laughs> and the fact that Luke Farrell is a key player of the Jaguars offense tells you everything you need to know because he's their back, he's their second tight end, their blocking tight end. He's actually pretty good at in that role. But it's just that he is key because Evan Ingram can't do certain things. He can't block. He's more of a glorified receiver and everything. But that's just kind of what this offense is kind of made out to be. So uh yeah, I I, I only can get so high with it, even if I'm a little higher than maybe I was like a month ago. All right. What's something you keep track of this year or something that you're excited about with the Jags? Uh I, no, I, I am excited to see the steps that Trayvon Walker takes under Nielsen. I, I, I keep trying to tell Falcons fans this. He squeezed way more than what was there in Atlanta last year. That was not a talented defense. Uh and you know, if you look at EPA and success rate, they still rank pretty high. DVOA, they were 24th. You know, that's... Yeah. There's a lag. There's, <laughs> There's a, a lag, lag with DVO, DVOA, I've noticed. Like, yeah, just because it's so much based on, the, you know, defenses or opponents that you go against, which matters. But, it, yeah. yeah, there's just a little lag and with it. Yeah. They they did give up, like, almost 50 points to the Saints at the end of the season. So, <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that'll that ding you a little. Uh, but this is just... it's This is a way more talented defense than what Nielsen had in Atlanta. And if we're mm -hmm. going to go back to... You know what people say about him with the Saints. He's a t he's an evaluator and a, a developer of defensive line talent. That you should be pretty excited if you're looking at Trayvon Walker and saying because there's still a lot athletically that's untapped there, and this could be the guy to, to get it out. We already see uh, Mason Smith have a pretty good preseason after doing absolutely nothing at LSU uh, except you know for getting hurt in the Florida State game a couple years ago, celebrating, but. He's bounced back. I didn't really know if that was possible for him, but he looks like a way better player already. So Nielsen could be a dude. If with if Clayus Campbell could get six and a half sacks and seventeen QB hits last year, and ten TFLs, like without being able to move, out of a, get out of a stance, like Trevon Walker in this defense should be able to <laughs> stack some numbers in it because it should just get him a straight line into the right spots. It, it's just he's going to put even the linebackers who you know Foy is Foy and he he's kind of an empty calories guy, but he's solid. He's like a nice baseline starter for you. 
I don't think Devin Lloyd is, he's too up and down for me. He's too all over the place. This defense is going to be so much better for him because they're going to just go, hey, we're on a simulated pressure here. Go get the quarterback. Like he doesn't have to think, he just let him run and go. He has some pass rushing chops that got way overblown when he was coming out of college, but they're in there and this type of defense is perfect for him where they can just find ball, get ball. It just limit his role. And I think that's so much better for him. So yeah, it's just their picks are just always so funny because it's just like you look at the roster. I'm like, all right, strange. Are you doing anything? Tank Bigsby? No. Okay. All right. Never mind. Cause that leads us into rookie and second year players to watch. <laughs> I think the easy ones are their first round. Anton Harrison, Brian Thomas for me. Uh, Harrison's a star at right tackle. Thomas is going to come along this year, but uh, do you have any other guys? Because some of the other picks already kind of feel like they're washed and it's like their second year. Uh, mine was Antonio Johnson. I, I really liked him. Oh, yeah. Texas a and uh, Fell to the Good fifth job. round and he looks like he's Going to be in line to start this year uh, yeah. at at one of the safety spots. That's safety, which I, I think it's good. I think he his. I, I was kind of surprised he fell to the fifth round because I really liked his coverage ability, like on some of the bigger tight ends that he saw in college. I uh, but I think like you pair him with Cisco, and if you can get the health from Tyson Campbell and you 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 leave a Darnell Savage in the role that was meant for him, like this could be a good secondary. I I don't know what Ronald Darby has left in the tank. You know, that second cornerback spot, uh, spot is probably going to be a little bit dangerous for them. But uh, man, I, I just I, I can't get over like this is a way more talented defense than the one that Nielsen was just coordinating. So I, I'd be pretty pumped about this if I was a Jags fan. You're like, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling <laughs> this you is guys. a better DB room. Yeah, yeah. Yes. no, it really is. No, that's a good shot with Johnson. I, and like I said, I'm excited about Cisco and, and Campbell got paid and everything, but he's, you know, he's a he's a one. He's a true CB one. Um, how high he is at the bat? up for a debate but he's still a very good corner that d- deserved to get paid so your pick do you have any i, I, I feel on this one this one was tough i i i think i'm gonna go over nine i went let's over go, two let's, let's, let's eight go eight nine and and eight. yeah let's let's go nine and eight one one That's one win over uh hopefully they just don't have the most embarrassing class of franchise history like they did last year it feels like just yeah nothing surprised me with this franchise just this, this is how the Jaguars show. Remember, I was going on my rant the other day about being a Mariners fan and all the games I went to, like guys getting hurt and everything. I was a Jags fan for a little bit too, so I was, I've I've had some I've had some great team memories and curses that I've had. I got Thank the, God for the Randy Moss, dude. Holy because <laughs> <laughs> I have some somewhat some good memories with anything. Uh, all right, moving on to yeah, my I was also over for the Jags. Going on to the last team, in the AFC South, the team that is favored at nine and a half wins and that is the houston texans the defending champions of the afc south all right chuck you look at the houston texans what do you like about them why could they go over nine and a half wins uh dude cj stroud he's the he's <laughs> got right. the goods they, <laughs> they went from the second overall pick to a playoff team and won a playoff game against the best defense in football so i, I think that's a good starting point i uh, we'll see what happens with stefan Diggs, but like if he's willing to take the back seat to Nico Collins and the offensive line improves, like I, that, that could be easily one of the best offenses in the league. You got offensive coordinator continuity. CJ Stroud's good. Wide receiver room is pretty good. We'll see what Joe Mixon has in the tank. Like if the offensive line takes a step forward, they're, they're going to score a lot of points. Yeah. Uh, even because their offense run game stunk last year, offensive line was not good, had injuries, all the bad stuff that happens to offenses that usually sinks them. And Stroud was just like a dude and every time he played, other than the Jets game, which was like the one where he was just getting, I mean, <laughs> folded in half, <laughs> which is like, you know, that's what everyone was kind of happening against the Jets. Uh, yeah, it's Stroud. It's Stroud, the pass catchers, namely Nico Collins, who is a star star. Um, anyone that keeps going with digs and and tanked out, it's like, no, no, it's Nico. It's it's Nico should won, and those guys are auxiliary targets. And even they're running two tight end looks a lot. Like this is a Kyle Shanahan offense, even with Bobby Slug. So everyone that thinks it's just gonna be like, oh, they got Stefan Diggs, they're gonna just pass it every single down. They're gonna run a lot. <laughs> and they're gonna run out two tight ends, and then they're gonna do play action, and then they'll pass on third down as the game goes along. That's just kind of the formula. Um, but I, I like to upgrade at run back, Joe Mixon. Even if it's not prime Mixon, it's still an improvement of what they had. And on defense. I'll get to negatives, but they have a pass rush and they have Derek Stingley. That that's 
not bad. And especially when I think this team's going to score some points, it's good to have a pass rush as opposed to, oh, we stopped the run. We can't stop anybody through the air. At least we have a pass rush that if teams have to chase points and start passing against us, that's the formula you want to go for for it. So they're going to be an exciting team. They just have a lot of fun young players. They have stars at the premium spots, receiver, left tackle, quarterback, uh, corner, all the spots that you want to have a guy. They have a star there. So uh, it's a fun team. Why could they go under the Texans? Some weaknesses, things you don't like about the Houston Texans this year. I have a couple. Uh, yeah, you talk about the defense. I, especially like in the front seven, honestly, maybe even on the back end too, because you're going to be pretty you're young. Talking. Pretty young. I, I think the, the middle of the defense is pretty weak, um, especially a linebacker. Yeah, it's a spine, man. That, that's it for me, too. Yeah. You're, you're, you're just kind of dealing, especially a, like a defensive tackle, you're just dealing with journeymen, like Foley, Fodokasi, Mario Edwards, Tim Settle. Like, these are these are just guys. You know, yeah. Foley, Foley was yep. pretty good with the Jets, but it feels like he's kind of on the back nine mm-hmm. of, of where he's at now. So, and then you pair that with the linebacker room of Christian Harris, Aziz Alshayar, Henry Totuo. <sighs> I know about that. Uh, Because yeah. I, like, Aziz is, I was interested in him like two years ago, you know, and then it's, he gets away from Fred Warner and you're like, oh no, you're just not that it's guy. It's fine. Yeah, he's just <laughs> fine. I'd like it better if he had a better guy next to him. That's, that's, yeah, it was I, fine I, when he had Fred. Right. I, I wrote him on a breakout thing and that's why I said, I was like, I, he's my guy by default, but I'm saying he's like a linebacker too. <laughs> that's going to have to be one. It's, it's the spine of the defense. That, that's it. it. It's, which was kind of what it was for me last year. But yeah, Aziz Alshair, it's a lot of players I like individually. But the fact that they kind of built it out of them, I get a little hesitant. So Aziz Alshair, Jimmy Ward, who I really like, but is never healthy, and it was best as a slot player. Jalen Petrie, who I really like, and, and but he's best as a slot player and move around, which I think they'll use him a little bit as. But Henry Toto is unplayable. You can't defend the pass. And I'm not as high on Christian Harris as others are. So you mentioned the defensive tackles too, is that I think teams are going to be able to run on this team. And I, and I think that's just going to be an issue that they'll have the whole year just because of who they have and what style that D'Amico Ryans likes to play. Zone, quarters, rotate the three. That works great when you have a cool defensive line and Fred Warner cleaning up every mess. So I think they have to get into shoot boat races. Like every game, I think with the Texans could be a race, uh, like a sprint, uh, sprint to 30. Uh, and I think that's what they have to play for is maybe that that's just a weakness I have with them. And then, so that's a thorn though, like that, when you play good teams, the good teams can run the ball. So that's why I, I get a little hesitant with the, how far they maybe can go in the long run spoilers. All right. Player or thing that you're most excited or something that you're keeping track of with this team. Uh, Desmond King was cut today by the Texans, which is putting another member of the Georgia Bulldogs defense. Yes. Yes. into the starting lineup and also potentially another rookie safety into the starting lineup or at least like you know starter ish level reps yeah right right um kamari lassiter caden bullock uh their second and third round picks this year uh that is going to be huge just like the the uh you know the spine of their defense because if we're expecting the spine of the defense to be weak plus you're throwing two rookie dbs out there We'll just have to see what that looks like because I, I I think that with rookie DBs, you just got to give them a learning curve. Because I think we've seen a lot of guys be terrible as rookies and then kind of figure it out. It's really tough, uh, and it might look rough for them this year. Yep. Yeah, you got to kind of want them to take their lumps. It's hard. It's hard. It's a hard position. <laughs> they, they, they really hard. Learn. <laughs> it's really hard. You got to learn. Uh, yeah, it's just layers added with Stroud in this offense. Like, Stroud. He's so cool. Like preseason was so much fun to watch with him because it's like, oh, wow, you're already better. Yeah, that happens when you're really young and seem like you really love the game and work at it. Uh, so I'm excited just to watch his ascension. And can this just run game be workable like at all? Like can Bobby Slow kind of like figure out the formula for him? Like he's going to pound it. Like I just want to keep emphasizing that with people. Like he's going to do it. But it's just how they make it work for them as opposed to maybe copying maybe his past spots. And I think he, he'll work at it, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to guess for rookie second-year players, is that Lassiter? Yep. <laughs> so it's, Lassiter yeah, Lassiter and yeah. Bullock. Were my, yeah, uh, go ahead. I, and then I, I'm going to throw in Juice Scruggs in there, the ballad of Juice Scruggs. Oh, yeah, Scruggs. I, I had him written down too. I yeah, I, I just want to see. Yeah, this other than Stroud, I, I should make that exception other than him. Um, yeah, Juice Scruggs, I just want to see what he's up to uh, uh, this year. Played, I thought he was going to be center only in this league. They played him a little bit at guard. Seen back at center. Um, but yeah, I liked him. He was a Shrine Bowl vet. 
All right, so they are at nine and a half wins, the Texans, over or under nine and a half wins? Over. Offense is too good. I think I'm over too. I think I'm over for all these teams. I think I have some AFC South's a little bit sneaky good, way better than people are realizing. Even if, I think it's a lot of imperfect imperfect teams, which I think makes it a lot of fun. Lot of, it's also fun, like good offense, bad defense combos, which, which makes it for some good games. 